Hey guys, so today we are going to be looking at quadratics, um, solving the quadratic equations when the uh, right hand side is not equal to zero. And so this is what that looks like. And it could be a couple of different manifestations here. It could be just the constant is over here. It could be that everything except the lead term is over here. And we're gonna talk about this one uh, a little bit in depth because we could subtract the 8x squared to the other side, but then that would lead us, leave us with a negative lead term, and we don't want that. So let's get cracking here. Um, so the first step, these are the same steps from yesterday. I literally just copied and pasted them over here. The first step is to make sure that it says equals zero. And obviously right now it does not. And so the one thing that we would need to remove from this side of the equation is the negative 56 and how we get rid of it is by doing the opposite and so this would read a squared plus 15k and then we would add the 56 uh, to both sides and so we get plus 56 and then when we add 56 to the to the right hand side it would cancel out and it would be a big fat nothing and then we would go from there and so uh, just to recap what we did yesterday, and so you can see more examples, let us continue with factoring it. And I cheated. I wrote down my uh, wrote down my process before I started this video. But you know what? That's because I didn't want it to take so long. So I'm going to stop talking about that and let's go. So looking at this, this is one of those easy ones where there's no lead coefficient. And all we have to do is determine what two numbers multiply to be 56 and add to be 15. And so obviously that's going to be positive 7 and a positive 8. That's the wrong button. My bad. And then we have our two factors. We have them equal to 0. And so we set each one of them equal to 0. And so we get k plus 7 equals 0 and k plus 8 equals 0. And so that means that when we solve each of these, we subtract 7 from both sides and get a negative 7. We subtract 8 from both sides and we get a negative 8. Now, I did this on the quick recap um, video from yesterday, the number 6. And what I used, I don't know why I used a new equation, my bad guys. Um, there we go. Is instead of doing k equals negative seven and k equals negative eight or you know list form like this instead of doing that i use the butterfly brackets and that's a shift brackets on your um keyboard here next to the p and so the butterfly brackets there that is set notation and that means that the answers that work for this are negative seven and negative eight and set notation and that's all you need to do Notice that these are not parentheses. Parentheses are indicative of a point. This is not a point. This is not a coordinate location. These are two numbers that will make um, this equation true. Luna, go on the couch. Sorry, dogs, uh, dogs bark. Give me a second. And we're back. Here we go. So um, let's go on to the next one. This is the one that I was talking about that we do want to make sure that one side says equals zero. Does it have to be the right hand side that says equals zero? No. Remember the reflexive property of equality says that you can have it willy nilly on either which way. However, if we were to move the 8x squared, uh, we would have to do so by subtracting it. And then we would end up with a negative 8x squared and then we would have to factor out a negative and it would just throw a, a chink in the chain and it would be horrible. So I'm going to move each one of these pieces to the left-hand side. It'll be just as, as, um, as easy, I think. So um, I closed out my equation bar. There we go. And so I'm going to first add the 40, or I'm sorry, subtract the 43x to the other side. And I will have 8x squared minus 43x. And so this one is gone. And then I would subtract 30 from both sides. And then I would be left with nothing on the right-hand side. So there we go. This one uh, took me a few moments to, to really um, figure out. And so I'm really glad that I used my just clipboard here. 
And um, I determined what two numbers, remember, whenever we have the lead coefficient, because these uh, 43, I'm pretty sure is a prime number, is, is not going to be nice. Um, but with the lead coefficient, you have to multiply the first and last term. So two numbers that multiply to be negative 240 and add to be, what is that, negative 43? Um, that took me a moment, but then I thought, you know, um, I got my calculator out and I thought, you know, what kind of uh, numbers would definitely go into this one instead of trying to find two numbers that add to be 43. I just started with the 240 and I'm like, man, it's got to be something kind of close to, um, you know, five, six, seven, something like that. And so I divided it by six. It was close, but not quite right. It didn't come out nicely, um, but five did. And so what I got was a negative 48 and a positive five. And that's just sitting there playing with the calculator. And yeah, it took me a second, but I mean, it was really just, um, trying and failing with different numbers. So there you go. So with this one, it was going to be 8x squared, because we're still in the factoring stage, 8x squared um, minus 48x plus 5x, oh dear, minus 48x plus 5x, um, and then minus 30, equals zero. And then I was able to group it from there. If you like the, the Xbox method instead, you know, that's your business. And then there, I'm just using the brackets. And there we go. So then I would go, this is 8x minus 6 and 5 5 x minus 6. And so then see it twice, write it once, and I would get 8x um, plus 5 times x minus 6, and that equals 0. And so now, again, I have to set each factor equal to 0, because that was just uh, steps 1 and 2. Make sure that the right-hand side says equal 0 and factor the left side. And so now we're going to set each piece equal to zero. 8x plus 5 equals zero. And x minus 6 equals zero. Obviously, that second one is really, really easy because all we have to do is add the 6 over. We get a positive 6. Yay, woo. However, this one over here, and I, and I kind of showed you the shortcut yesterday, is first we would subtract 5 from both sides, and then we would divide by 8. And so if we take 0 minus 5, we get negative 5. Divided by 8 is negative um, 5 eighths. So I'm going to put my butterfly brackets. I'm going to get my little fraction bar out. And it would be negative 5 over 8, comma, positive 6. Oopsie, I did the thing I told you not to do. Yeah, that's bad how I roll. Anyway, um, so those are our two answers. And so if you want to remember what that trick was, take the opposite of the constant term and then divide that by the coefficient. And that's going to be your, your uh, answer there. Okay. All right. Um, so you've noticed that these have uh, the assignment and the examples, and a lot of these are very, very similar to the ones that I am showing you, you know, with the two terms on the one side, with the single term on the other side. This one has three terms on the left and another one on the right. <sighs> okay, not a big deal, not a big deal, let's, let's go. So the first thing that we want to do is move the 8v back to the left side. And so there's already a V term over here. So like, what's the deal? Well, just move it over and then we'll combine like terms. It's not a not anything big. So here we go. We're going to see 3V squared plus 36V. That's not a V. Okay. And then we're going to subtract 8V because that's how we're going to get it to the other side of the equal sign. So subtract 
complete b and then add 49 just like it says equals zero because we have moved the 8b and so now we have um okay, here we go 3b squared plus 36 minus 8 is 28b and then plus 49 equals zero okay now again we're gonna have to multiply to be to get some pretty big numbers here and I actually have a lot cooler way to uh, determine this than just playing with the calculator. So it's going to multiply to be 3 times 49 is 147. And it's going to add to 28. Now, here's the deal. 3 is a prime number. And 49 only has one factor other than 1. And that's 7. 7 times 7, right? And so I know that this has to add up, or this has to be divisible by seven. And so I went and got my calculator and I divided 147 by seven and I got 21 and seven. Okay, so now I have three B squared plus 21 B plus 7b plus 49 and still equal zero. Oh, oh dear, equal zero. All right. And so now I'm going to group this. And whenever I do, I'm going to get, all right, and I, and I pull out the GCF, I'm going to get, whew, goodness, this takes so much longer than writing it on the whiteboard. I tell you, <laughs> I missed the whiteboard. Um, Unfortunately, whenever I make whiteboard videos, they just take so long to upload and it's and it's horrible. But anyway, so let's uh, factor this out. We get 3b, that's not a b, um, b plus 7 plus 7, because we pull out the 7 from 7b and 49, b plus 7. And see it twice right at once, we get 3b plus 7 times v plus 7. And those are our two factors. And so then we can just go 3v plus 7 equals 0. And we would get um, negative 7 thirds. And notice I didn't put it in the equation editor here. Um, that's just that's just the um, the slashy bar thing. And that's totally fine because that's easy to read too. And then v plus 7 equals zero. Obviously, we would just subtract seven from both sides and we would get a negative seven. Close our butterfly brackets and that is the set of answers. Those are the two answers that we get. Could you say v equals seven and or negative seven and v equals negative seven thirds? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, but this, to me, it's it just, it types easier. Okay, last one for me, and then I'm going to let you get back to this. Now, the same rule will still stand for tomorrow. If you have any questions that you want to see done, um, I will post them Friday night. Just send me a private comment on your assignment with the number of the problem that you want to see. Okay. All right. So here we go. Last one. Number four. Okay, so this is actually very, very similar to this first one here, except in this first one, we just had the constant term on the right-hand side. Now it is the, uh, the B term, I guess we could say. And so we're going to move that over to the left-hand side. It is a negative 3K, so we're going to add it. And so we get 2K squared um, plus 3K minus 14 equals nothing. And so again, these do not have a GCF. And so we need to determine what multiplies to be negative 28 and adds to um, positive 3. And those two numbers I got were a positive 7 and a negative 4. And so whenever I do this factor by grouping, I'm going to see 2k squared plus 7k minus 4k. Oh, no, I don't want to do it that way because 2 and 4 have stuff in common. And so I want to do it the other way first. I want to go um, 2k squared minus 4k plus 
7k uh, minus 14. Could I have done it the other way? Absolutely, yes. But we saw the other day how, um, I don't know, this this tends to be a little bit neater because the two and the four, they're, they're nice compatible numbers, just like seven and 14. Okay, um, so yes, grouping, 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 grouping. Show the groups. Okay, there we go. Um, so when we group this out, we are going to have 2K, K minus 2, plus 7, that's not a plus, plus 7, K minus 2. Well, I hope it's K minus 2 because that's what we had over there. And remember, they have to be the exact same thing. And so we get again... Um, 2k plus 7 and k minus 2. And those are equal to 0. And so now we're on to step 3, which is set each of those pieces equal to 0. So 2k um, plus 7 equals 0. That means that k is going to be, I'll just go ahead and show you how else you can write this. k is going to be uh, negative 7 halves because you take the opposite of seven divided by two, or you just, you know, subtract it over, like you know how to do a two-step equation. <laughs> so you can subtract seven from both sides and then divide that by two and you get exactly this. Um, and then K minus two equals zero. And obviously we would add two to both sides. So K also is positive two. And so you can just list that like here, um, or you can say k equals negative 7 halves and k equals 2. Okay, so that's pretty much all I got here. In the assignment, this is very much like our second problem. This one is very much like that same one, except, hey, look, it doesn't have a lead coefficient. That's so nice. <laughs> um, this one is like number 6 from yesterday. And so since this is the only thing that's on the right-hand side, you move that over to the left, and then it looks exactly like number six from yesterday, except it's an M instead of a V or whatever it was. Um, this is just like the last one, but look, again, there's no lead coefficient. This is so nice. <laughs> lead coefficient is when you have to do Xbox or, G or GCF or the um, other one. What's the other one? Grouping. There we go. Um, so this one is very much like the very first one that we did, number one, and this one is very much like number four that we just finished. If you have some big, big numbers, um, let's see. I think this is the, oh no, this one doesn't have a B term. Did I copy it wrong? I'm, no, I don't think I did. This is going to be just like your number three right here, except uh, slightly different. You know what? You're welcome, world. Now you only have five problems. <laughs> okay, because I'm, I'm not sure if I miscopied that or if it um, was going to come out to be something else. But yeah, no. So we're just going to chuck that one off and, and call it a failure. So here we go. Um, this last one is just like number four that we just did. So you have five problems. Please make sure that you do them. Make sure that you ask me any questions that you have. Um, ideally, I would like to see your work, you know, out like this, or if you're handwriting it, make sure that you attach a picture of your uh, handwritten work. But I mean, this is this is what's happening here. Um, this is solving quadratic equations. It is it is beefy. It takes a lot of space. So um, that's it from me. If you have any questions, uh, make sure you reach out to me. And if you want to see specific problems worked out, make sure that you send me a private message that says which number you want to see. All right. Have a great weekend and we will start talking about graphs next week. It's going to be so much uh, less cumbersome here and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.